Oh, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday stuff and things. And on this pleasant Sunday stuff and things, we will be talking about many stuff and things, including upcoming videos we have for the two channels, Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays. We will be talking about a strange trend that may be kind of outdated now, but it's something I've noticed for a few years on YouTube videos and the kind of music that they have in the background. We will also be talking about some eh, frustrations, some issues I'm having with YouTube in general. We want to get into that. That's probably the topic of the show. And then I want to talk a little bit about weather, which I know is the most inane topic that you could possibly imagine, but obviously we've been having a lot of extreme weather recently, and so I want to touch base with that. And then, of course, we will have your questions in hashtag ask stuff and things. We have some good feedback from last week and some other questions, good stuff to get, to get dove, divin, dive, dive into. And that's all coming up on this week's Sunday Stuff and Things. So please enjoy it. Okay, I mentioned upcoming videos on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. Many of you are enjoying, well, some of you, and I really appreciate those of you who are, are enjoying the Hitman 2 videos that we're posting. That is continuing, but on Monday, is it Monday? I think on Monday, I am going to have one video in the series that I do every once in a while called You've Got to Play This, or You've Got to Play. I can't remember which one it is. Um, and the that's basically where I take a game. It's not something that I'm playing through on the channel, but it's something that I've really enjoyed. And I say, hey, you've got to play it, and here's why. And I show you some gameplay footage and talk about the game a little bit. The game on Monday that I will be talking about is Ghost of Tsushima, which I recently completed, did not play on the channel, but absolutely loved. It was exactly, it was, it was though it were made for me or made to appeal to me. So that will be on Monday, but then on Wednesday and Friday, we'll have our normal Hitman 2 videos, and that series will continue for a while. I've recorded quite a few of those episodes, and I enjoyed it quite a bit, and those who are watching it seem to enjoy it as well. So please tune in to that every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Stuff and Things Plays. We have videos at 2 p.m. Pacific. And then on the normal Stuff and Things channel, I have a sort of first impressions, but also kind of a review Typically on a first impressions video, I sample a blend, I tell you what my initial uh, feelings are about the blend, and then a week or two later, I do a final review. I did a blend today, I recorded it today, it'll be posting on Wednesday, where I don't want to do a full review on it, so the first impressions is sort of, it can't be considered a review because I haven't tried it enough to give a final verdict on it, but it, you'll basically get what I feel about this blend. And it's an interesting one. It is Handsome Flake. Let's get that in the light, maybe, sort of. And this is by Samuel Gawith. It's exclusive to PNC, and it was sent to me by a very generous viewer by the name of Robert. So thank you for that, Robert. And judging by the description on the PNC website, it said that it was a blend that was a Virginia Perique that then had a Lakeland Essence topping. And I'm not a fan of that. I know some of you are, some of you are not, but a Lakeland Essence is very floral, kind of perfumey, to me kind of soapy or shampooy. I don't really like it. So I was assuming I wouldn't really like the blend. Did the first impressions video, and it's not quite what I was expecting. So you should check this out. It's an interesting, unique blend. It just came out on the market, I think in February. Uh, so this month, and uh, that will be posting this Wednesday. So please stay tuned for that. And then we will be having a new wallet review coming up soon. I haven't done one in a while, even though I have done quite a few on this channel. That was sort of a thing for a while. But I got sent a new interesting wallet uh, by a company called Slimpudo. I think it's Slimpuro. Slimpuro. Um, and it is called the Znap. Znap with a Z, the Slimpudo Snap Wallet. It is a sort of minimalist wallet design. You can see how small the footprint is of this thing. And it's a really interesting design. I'm looking forward to putting it through its paces. I've been using it for about a week now, and next weekend I will record the video and give you my final thoughts. So if you're into sort of uh, minimalist, uh, everyday carry, slim wallets, 
things that are a little bit off the beaten path. This is a combination of aluminum and leather, so sort of interesting materials that it's made out of. The Slim Pro, Slim Pudo, I keep wanting to say Slim Pro, Slim Pudo Snap Wallet Review will be not this coming week, but the week after. I think. I still am I'm in contact with their people because um, they had asked me not to post the review until they had some available on Amazon, I think. So we'll check into that. But I think this will be the video for next week. So please be excited. All right, this next topic is sort of a mini rant and sort of a, a cry for help. How can I couch this? Let me take a sip of coffee here. <clears throat> Any of you who watch YouTube videos, and I'm assuming most of you do because you're watching this video right now, and I would also assume that you watch other people on YouTube, you may have noticed a trend in the last few years. It may be slightly waning now, but there was a trend where pretty much every single video, especially vlog type videos, if they showed B-roll or had any kind of background music, it would always be this, this, this certain kind of music. And I don't know what it is and it's driving me insane. And it's, it's one of those things where I'm wondering if I'm insane or if the whole rest of the world is insane and I'm the only one who isn't sane because I keep trying to find out information about this on the computer and I can't really find anyone talking about it or anyone commenting about it. But it's the music and it's so annoying because I don't know what to call it. I guess if I had to pick something, well, we'll get into that. But it's basically like a beat, sort of an electronic beat and then there will be sort of a drop, maybe like in the background, but then it will be on top of these, or on top of that will be the most obnoxious chipmunk style vocals, but not really saying anything like in the background, like that's my best impression so far, or the best thing I can come up with. It's maybe like, I guess you could say it was EDM, like electronic dance music, but with chipmunky vocals. And it's something that I see all the time, especially like a couple years ago, the bigger YouTubers, maybe one to two years ago, the really big YouTubers would use it constantly. But now I'm noticing maybe as their usage is dropping off, I'm noticing just the most random people putting it on their videos. And it'll be like a 52 year old guy talking about his bird photography and then when he goes to b-roll or he's showing like an image that he took it'll have the in the background with the video the beat it's just like if you're a 52 year old overweight man with a double chin and you're really into birds and like spotted grachnels or whatever i don't know birds except for crows i don't think you like that kind of music i really don't think you do and I don't think the people watching your videos like that kind of music. I don't know anyone who likes EDM, and I don't even know for sure that this is EDM. Obviously, some people do because it's super popular, but I don't know any of those people. I don't know people who actually will just like sit down and listen to EDM when they're by themselves. Like, isn't that just for going to a dance party? I, I don't know. I, anyway, I, we're not going to get into music because I'll always offend somebody, but EDM, ugh so irritating but these 52 year old men do not like it their viewers do not like it I, I can almost guarantee that but they just put it on and I don't know where they're getting it because I use there's a free YouTube audio library where you can get copyright free songs that you're allowed to put on your videos I haven't found this music on that YouTube audio library because I believe me I've been doing extensive extensive research trying to find this music because I just want to know what it is um, I don't find it on there. So where are these people getting it? And why are they all on the same page? Where was the secret YouTube memo that went out to all content creators saying you must use this music in the background of your videos? I never got that memo. I don't know what this music is. I guess I'm putting it out there for you. Have you noticed this trend? And it's so difficult for me to even try to replicate it because it's like, it's like electronic dance beat. Well, not even dance. It doesn't necessarily have like super high tempo all the time. But there is usually a drop in the background and then like those vocals will come up. I don't know. 
What is it called? Is there a genre of music that this is? Or is it just EDM in general? Or is there a specific subgenre of EDM where there are just exclusively nonsensical chipmunk vocals over the background? I need to know what this is. I'm hoping it's dying. It seems like maybe it's dying out, but it, like everything, it's the most popular people maybe make it popular and then it filters down to everyone else and then people who are older or maybe not in the the forefront of obnoxious social trends they get it a bit late so now i'm noticing it a lot more on maybe smaller channels or people who aren't necessarily at you know the the bleeding edge of music and youtube it's just it's just so weird to me i'm trying to think of a specific example i don't I don't want to show you clips from somebody's video as though I'm like making fun of their video, but there was a guy the other day who I was watching and it was literally a video about changing the string saddles on an old Fender tele Telecaster guitar. And he had to be like 70 years old and he was just very flat talking to the camera, but then he switched to a little bit of B-roll where he was showing some of the guitars and this freaking music comes on. I'm like, man, what are you doing? You don't like this, do you? Maybe he does. I don't know. Maybe he does. But I don't think he's going to be playing that on his Fender Telecaster. Anyway, what is this music? What is it called? Do you guys know what I'm talking about, for one? And two, what is it called? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you. Next, speaking of YouTube, um, I've had a little issue recently that I thought I would apprise you of. <sighs> I got a, an email from YouTube that said, one of my videos has been found in violation of their community guidelines and that the video has been removed from YouTube. I was like, what? Removed from YouTube? That's strange. So I looked into it Read through, read through the email a little bit more. It said, this is your one and only warning. Um, if you get another community guideline violation like this, you will lose your upload and live stream privileges for, I can't remember if it was a week or two weeks. And so I was like, okay, this is, this is kind of a big deal because if this, I don't even know how this happened initially, or I didn't. I was like, okay, what's going on? Could this happen again? And then I won't be able to upload. So I looked into it. It was a video from almost five years ago. I think it was May of 2016. And it was one in which, uh, it was the Danish, Danish pipe shop had sent me a tin of uh, brown sugar flake by Gawith, which was, I think, exclusive to them. And I had done a review of it. And then at the end of the review, I had had a link to the Danish pipe shop if you wanted to get some. And according to their community guidelines now, and I don't think this was the case when I first uploaded the video, it says that you cannot sell any regulated materials. First of all, I wasn't selling it, I was reviewing it. But just the fact that you linked to a website where you were able to buy regulated goods meant that it was in violation of their policies. Like, okay, so at the time, I'm fairly certain that that wasn't a policy on YouTube. In fact, I remember maybe a year or two later, I had to stop posting any firearms videos because Brownells would send me things occasionally, um, not like full weapons or anything, but just accessories and stuff like that. And I would link to Brownells. And I remember the policy changing where YouTube was like, you can't link to these websites anymore. And so, I said, I said, okay, I can't do that anymore. I won't do those kinds of videos anymore. And so now five years later, almost five years later, a video that has been up for all that time was not a problem when I first uploaded it and then was never like caught by the system. I'd forgotten about the video, obviously. Five years later, I get an email saying, the video's gone. If there are any other violations, you can't upload. That just seems backwards and ridiculous to me, and I don't know what exactly I should do. I was thinking of appealing it, not because, you know, if it's their, if it's their policy, it's their policy. I would not try to fight to have the video still up there, but I just wanted to appeal the fact that my one and only warning has been used on this video. Wouldn't it make more sense 
if this policy change, which I think it did in between me posting the video and now, if that's the case, why not send an email saying, hey, uh, this video is now in violation of our policy, either edit it or remove it. If you don't do that, then this is your one warning. The next time you will have a, uh, a stop to your ability to upload or live stream. Doesn't that make more sense? Instead of just like dinging me right away for a video that's over, that's almost five years old. That's in a nutshell, the problem with YouTube. And I think it's the problem with a lot of content platforms where you know, you just feel like you're lost in this huge sea of, of policies that can constantly be in flux, can constantly be changing. You don't know really if you're always um, in compliance with these policies and especially something <laughs> that's five years old. If something changes and suddenly that video is no longer in compliance, how can you be considered in violation of a policy that wasn't a policy when you initially uploaded a video. It just seems backwards to me and I just don't really understand why Google and why YouTube run their business the way they do. And obviously there are a lot of good things about YouTube. Um, it's a platform I've been on for a long time, but there are a lot of issues. And I know many of these things just stem from the fact that it is so huge. There are so many people uploading so many videos, but I just, it's gotten, it's gotten so difficult to actually have any sort of contact with any human being through Google or YouTube. It used to be that if there was a problem with the video, you could actually write in to creator support and someone might actually respond to you. They have completely stripped out that option. I had that a while ago where one of my Sunday Stuff and Things videos was deemed to be um, inappropriate for advertisers. And this, this happens quite a bit, but usually I do the automatic or the automated uh, appeal and usually it's overturned with the Sunday stuff and things videos. Anyway, this one was not overturned. It was upheld and I wanted to write in. It used to be, you could hit the help desk. You could go through, say, this is the issue. This is the issue. And now I want to contact a person, send an email that's gone. Now you just can't do it. And there's no way. And I'm, I'm assuming maybe if you're a really large channel, there is a way to talk to somebody from YouTube, but I can't find any way. It seems like my only avenue for doing that has been stripped away. So it's just frustrating. And so now I'm thinking, do I send in an appeal where I argue this case? Like this video is over five years old. I don't think it was in violation of your policy when I posted it. Why can't I just take it down and edit it or either just edit out whatever you don't like or take it down um, instead of me being charged my one and only warning I don't know if me appealing that and sending that in would just mean it goes to some automated system where they say, no, this is in violation. So now not only are you losing your warning, you're losing, you know, your first strike and now you can't upload. Like, I just don't know. You don't know when you're on YouTube. So I'm curious if any of you have YouTube channels, if you've ever dealt with anything like this, um, do you have any advice? I'm tempted to just, just leave it, I guess. Let them remove the video. I mean, the video is already not viewable by anybody. I don't really care anymore. Um, it couldn't be monetized anyway. But I'm just, I just, it doesn't sit well with me knowing that I'm being punished for something that I don't think was in violation of a policy when I originally uploaded it. And if they just told me, hey, you can't have this video up anymore, I'd say fine. They did that with some of my firearms videos. They just took them off. Um, but I didn't get penalized for that. So I don't know. That's just kind of some of the frustrations of trying to deal with YouTube. I spent a good two hours trying to weed through all this stuff last night, trying to find answers, trying to find options, alternatives, and uh, I couldn't really. And that was annoying. All right, now the last topic before we get to hashtag ask stuff and things, I'm just curious because you saw last week we had our snow day video on Sunday Stuff and Things where we got dumped on with snow here in Bellingham, Washington. And now it's about, I don't know, 48 degrees. Most of the snow has melted. There are a couple dirty piles of snow like that it were uh, plowed up in driveways and parking lots and things like that. But for the most part, it's gone. The temperature has more than doubled within the last week. It was... I think when I recorded that Sunday stuff and things, it was around 24, 25. Now it's close to 50. 
Um, I know that much of the rest of the country is still getting a lot of crazy winter weather. My little brother who lives in Houston with his family, they were experiencing some of the power outages and some of the really cold temperatures. I think they were in almost the single digits, maybe 10 degrees, something like that in Houston. So uh, I just kind of want a little roll call. Like, how is everybody doing? Is anyone, you know, snowed under? Are you experiencing crazy temperatures? Things like that. It's always cool to hear from you all and see what is going on, and especially with just the crazy weather we've been having. I just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. All right, gang, we have a few questions in hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer your question on the next Sunday Stuff and Things. If you don't like using Twitter, you can try to leave questions on YouTube comments. I try to go through all of those and pick questions out. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me there. But our first question comes via YouTube. This is from Smile Every Day. And this is actually not really a question. It's a comment on the um, Dunhill 4 video that I posted last week, which hopefully you all enjoyed, where I was just showing some of my favorite Dunhills, or all of my Dunhills. Smile Every Day says, for the price of those, you can get 30 times more other good pipe brands like Savinelli, Peterson, Rattray, etc. Dunhill pipes are amazing, but nothing special when you compare them with other pipes. They expensive. I'm, ass I'm assuming they meant they are expensive because of their vintage, and the brand is Dunhill. That's it. Okay, so thank you for writing in Smile Every Day. Um, I got a couple of these comments, and I just wanted to address them. First of all, it seems like you sort of contradict yourself because you say they are amazing, but then they're nothing special. Uh, in the same sentence. I would say that for current production pipes, you can buy a Costello pipe, and this is based on my own experience, you can buy a Costello pipe which compares very favorably to these old Dunhills. I don't have any experience with a brand new Dunhill. I have heard quite a few things saying that they are not as good as they used to be, but I can't comment on that myself because I have never had one. But I will say that you could get a brand new Costello, and they're not cheap, obviously, but you can still, you know, a couple hundred bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks, and get a pipe that compares very favorably to these old Dunhills. So there is that, and I'm sure there are other new makers out there. But as far as like factory pipes, these classic Dunhills, the ones I've had from the 60s and 70s, um, they're amazing. They actually are really, really good. And I think that was sort of something I touched on a little bit in that video was that I think there's part of everyone who likes to think, oh, this thing that is expensive, it really can't be that good because maybe you feel as though you're not going to own one and you don't need to own one, obviously, but maybe you just feel, maybe it makes you feel better to say that, no, they're not really as good as people say, and then you feel better about the fact that you're not going to have one. That's kind of how I was. I, I was sort of expecting not to enjoy them as much as I did. But I have to admit, like, they're really great. They are really great pipes. And obviously, these are the examples that I have, and they're from a specific era. They're from the 60s and 70s. But every single one of them are amazing. They are up there with the very best pipes I have ever had. It's not to say you can't buy, buy a brand new pipe now for much less. That is just as good. But that's all I'm saying. So I'm not, I'm not saying that you need a Dunhill in order to experience the very best in the pipe hobby. But if you are able to get one from this era, because this is all I have experience with, then I'm fairly certain you're going to get a good experience. But like I said, I have my Shape 55 Costello I got, what was it, four years ago? Something like that. So very new pipe and it's fantastic. It compares very, very favorably to all of these Dunhills. So take that for what you will. But I would say that every one of those Dunhills is better than any Peterson I've ever had. It's not to say that you can't get a Peterson this better. Um, my Savinelli Corallo de Mare is probably as good as those Dunhills as far as just smoking characteristics. But again, that's inexpensive. I got it, you know, when did I get that? Maybe again, like five, six years ago. Uh, I got it used, so it wasn't as expensive as it would have been new, but that's not a standard Savinelli line pipe. 
Um, sometimes things are expensive for a reason. Do I think that classic Dunhill pipes are overinflated as far as the price? Probably. Do I think that new Dunhill pipes are too expensive? Probably. Um, but the ones I have are amazing and I really like them. Next, from James Walsh. What happened to your Petersons? You used to be so into them and we rarely see them in your videos anymore. Well, that kind of goes along with what we were just discussing. I have too many really nice pipes now and I do like Peterson pipes, but when you're comparing, you know, I had some Peterson Systems pipes. When you're comparing a recent Peterson pipe to a Dunhill pipe from the 60s or a Costello pipe from now, it's not always going to com compare super favorably. There is still uh, one or two Petersons that I do have in my normal rotation. One that's in my weekly rotation that I smoke all the time is my Peterson Sterling Silver Spigot pipe. It's great, it's a great pipe. Um, but some of those system pipes, even though they're great, when comparing them to, you know, uh, this Costello, it's just not quite as good <laughs> as this Costello is. And so, I think I've talked before about my pipe starting lineup. I mean, they're all Hall of Famers, every single one that I have now, and it's crazy. I don't deserve it. I don't know how I got to this point other than people being super generous. Some of them I got myself, but many of them were gifts. So I would never have been able to afford this on my own, and I have you guys to thank for it. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of, the, the competition is fierce to get on the pipe starting lineup uh, in the Stuff and Things studios. Next, from Ronnie. I've got to say, the picture quality of your videos is so much better since you got the new camera. Now that you've had it for a while, would you still recommend it? Uh, well, thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie is talking about the Canon EOS R6, which I'm using to film this right now. My shoulder itches. There we go. Um, yeah, I think this camera is fantastic. I absolutely love it. When I first got it and I was blathering on about it over and over, hold on, had to change the battery. We are back. When I was talking about it constantly, I know some people were getting irritated. And then when I was posting the first few videos, some people were saying, oh, I don't think it looks any better. It looks better. Yes, I am aware of the irony in talking about how good my video footage is looking recently when you have been watching a video which has been out of focus slightly throughout much of the video. Um, had a little issue with some focus lock settings on the camera. Hopefully I'll get that all figured out and uh, sorry. Now back to the video. It looks a lot better than my old camera. I don't think that's subjective at all. I think it's fairly obvious to almost anyone watching those videos that the camera quality is much better than it used to be. Um, I'm still learning, uh, not even necessarily learning the controls of the camera, but just about photography and video videography and everything in general. But I am quite happy with where we have gotten the video quality since I've gotten that new camera. And as far as the usability and everything, I think it's fantastic. I think for a mirrorless camera that you want to shoot video and photography with, for the price, I think it would be hard to beat. And I looked very extensively at other cameras with and specs from other cameras. I mean, there are things out now like the Sony A1, or actually I don't know if it's out now, but it's been announced, which looks amazing, but it's much more expensive. The Canon R5 is much more expensive. The Canon A, or the Sony A7S S3 is quite a bit more expensive. So for this price range, I think it'd be pretty hard to beat. But that being said, I think if you're into Nikon, you're into Sony, you're into Canon, into Fujifilm, whatever, you're gonna be able to find a nice camera that does probably what you want it to do. I don't think there are any super bad cameras out right now in the sort of prosumer, mid-range level. I think you're gonna be pretty happy with whichever one, you, whichever one you get. But gang, I think that's it. I think it's been long enough for a Sunday stuff and things, but before we go, it is time for the very best part of the show, and that is where we thank you. Those of you who support the channels on Patreon at $25 or more a month get a special shout out. If you would like to support the channels, there is a link in the description box below. We can't monetize a lot of the videos that we put on YouTube, so your donations help a lot to make new content, get things to review, get camera equipment and stuff like that. So this week, we would like to thank our good friends, <coughs> Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Glenn, Gus, Jason Buckner, Jen Oside, John Leone, 
Christian Kovacs, Joshua Jackson, Gloria Phillips, MD of the North, and Ryan McFadden. We would also like to thank the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month. People like Peter Straub, Bob McGee, and David Gudrew. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, for sharing, for commenting, all that good stuff. We appreciate it. Please check out the first impressions video of Samuel Gawith, Handsome Flake, coming up this week. The Slim Pudo wallet, which will probably be the week after. The You've Got to Play This video on Ghost of Tsushima on Monday, and then the Hitman series that will be Tuesday or Wednesday, Friday, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every week after that at 2 p.m. But uh, gang, until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.